What do you hate most about flying? Is it being cramped in that skinny little seat, not being able to get up and pee whenever you want? Maybe it's the fact that there's always a guy somewhere on your flight who thought that this was the perfect time and place to eat a really giant smelly meatball sub. Well, if you're an airline, the thing you probably like least about flying is drag. Drag is the total of all the forces that a fluid exerts on an object that's moving through it. And air, which is a fluid, can exert all kinds of drag on an airplane. So airlines burn a whole lot of fuel and money fighting drag each time an airplane plane flies. Now you might think of drag as being just the friction that's caused by the air as it rushes over the surface of the plane or as the plane smashes into it, and that's definitely part of it, but it's only a part. But there's also all kinds of wacky fluid dynamics going on all around the aircraft, especially vortices, swirling eddies of air that form over the wingtips and all along the trailing edge of the airplane's wings. They're a serious source of drag because as each powerful vortex whips around, it basically pushes down on the top of the plane wing while also pulling back on it effectively sucking the plane backward, which sucks. Because the airline is trying to move 162 people from Minneapolis to Orlando as quickly and safely as possible, and it's hard to do that when the laws of physics are drawing you backward a little bit every time you move the plane forward. That's why engineers invented winglets. Those are the tiny little bits of wing that turn upward at the end of an airplane's wings. They're basically an elegant solution to a complex problem. For a long time, engineers have known that the quickest, easiest way to reduce drag is just to increase the wingspan. The longer a wing is, the less it feels the effects of a vortex. But you can only make make wings so long before you have to add extra supports to strengthen them, which in turn adds a lot of weight. But you can achieve a similar effect by just curling the tips of the wings up. That shape interferes with the airflow of the vortices, reducing drag without adding too much extra weight. The idea was actually proposed back in the 1970s, when the U.S. was in the clutches of an oil shortage. A NASA engineer proposed winglets as a way to reduce drag by as much as 20 percent, thereby saving a ton of fuel. It took more than a decade of testing, but by 1989 the first commercial airliner with winglets was introduced. And since then, the concept has been tweaked and improved with each new airplane design. Over the years, this has saved billions of dollars of fuel. Today, winglets are commonplace. So the next time you're on an airplane enjoying a tiny foil bag of mini pretzels, and you look out the window to see those winglets, you can take heart in knowing that the airline is using two and a half to four and a half percent less fuel than it normally would. So go ahead and ask for another bag of pretzels. They can afford it. Thanks for asking, and thanks especially to all of our patrons on Patreon who keep these answers coming. If you would like to submit questions to be answered, you can go to patreon.com scishow, and don't forget to go to youtube.com scishow and subscribe. <laughs>